Hi everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video we talked about uh, the concept of shared memory. So in this video we will discuss more about the second uh, type of mechanism of uh, inter-process communication which is the message passing. So shared memory. So what we talked about here uh, like in the last video was that in case of shared memory any two processes which want to talk to each other they do so by uh, having a region of memory which is shared among these two. So there is one uh, shared memory region using which these two processes can actually talk to each other. Now um, the code to like you know create and manipulate this access, manipulate this particular shared memory region that has to be handled by the application programmer. So it is the job of application programmer to you know access, to write the code to access or even manipulate the shared memory region. Now if you want to achieve the same effect wherein the two processes can communicate with each other, they can, uh, this can actually be done without um, the involvement of application programmer. So we can do this, we can achieve the same effect of two processes having to communicate with each other. Uh, we can do this um, through the operating system by one more mechanism which is called the message passing. So message passing, it, it, uh, it actually is done by the operating system and uh, application programmers, they do not have to worry about uh, all the like extra code that we had to put here in the shared memory concept. Now when, when we talk about message passing, uh, so let's assume P and Q are the processes which are wanting to talk to each other. So here there is no sharing of memory. So this comes in handy when uh, we talk about environments like the distributed environments. So here these two processes would be maybe in some different regions so they cannot uh, share memory in such a case so in, in distributed environments this comes in uh, this this plays a very important role now just talk about uh, message passing so it provides two types of operations one is called a send operation and then there is one more called receive operation so both of these operations we perform between the two processes P and Q and this has to be done on some communication link. So there needs to be a communication link between these two. So there is this link. So the send and receive are the two operations which are um, actually performed on this link. So now let's talk about how we implement this uh, link, like logical implementation, how it is done. So just to talk about the implementation, we can actually implement this link in three ways. One is the direct or indirect uh, communication. Then we have asynchronous or synchronous communication. Then there is something called explicit and automatic buffering. So these are some three ways in which um, these are the logical implementation ways. So how to implement this communication link? There are three ways, direct and indirect communication, synchronous asynchronous communication, explicit and automatic buffering. So let's talk about each of these uh, individually now. So let's pick up the first one, which is the direct communication. So here, any two processes like let's say P and Q, uh, they can talk to each other directly in such a case. So that means uh, they are connected to each other through a communication link directly. So these two can uh, directly talk. In such a case, this communication link, so if we have a direct communication between two processes, process P must be aware of the identifier of this process Q and Q should be aware of P. So that requirement is necessary for direct communication. If P doesn't know uh, anything about Q, then we cannot send messages to Q. Uh, so in this case, the send and receive primitive would look like this. So the send, so any process wanting to send a message will have to specify what is the process that we are sending it to and we'll have to specify the message. So the first, so this, this, look, this will tell you that we are trying to send message this to process P. Then the receive would also look like uh, the same thing. So this means we are trying to receive this message from Q. This is sending to P, this is receiving from Q. 
So this is how the uh, send and receive primitives would look like for a direct communication. Now when we talk about um, direct communication, so the link can actually have two types of uh, addressing. One is the symmetrical addressing and then we have asymmetrical addressing. So whatever we just talked about where um, both the send and receive are actually uh, specifying the process. So this is this belongs to something called the symmetrical addressing. So here both the process, both the send and receive uh, primitives should would actually, uh, so the sending process and the receiving process would specify what is the other process. Like for example, the sending process will say that it is trying to send a message uh, to P and the receiving process will also specify what is the process from which the message is expected to be received. So this is symmetrical because uh, we'll have to actually, every process in, in a pair would have to actually know who it is trying to send to and uh, the receiver, receiving end should also know who, is, who it is trying to receive the message from. But there is one more way uh, called uh, the asymmetrical addressing. So here only the sender has to send the process identifier but the receiver, so the receive parameter would look like this. So here receive receiving command can be sent by any process so this tells you that the process which whoever called this receive command wants will, will receive this message and this id would be a variable that would be assigned to the process that sent this that sent this message so here the process which is calling receive need not know about the sending process so these are the two ways of uh, addressing like symmetrical and asymmetrical addressing. Now apart from this, uh, we'll have to talk about the properties of this communication link. So what all properties we have of this communication link. So one is that every process, uh, if it is a direct communication link, then every process should know uh, about the other process in this link. So that is one um, one property like where every process which is uh, involved in this communication link they need to know the identifier of the other process. So this is one property. The second property is that one communication link will be associated with exactly two processes. So only two processes will be attached to one communication link and between any two processes there would be only one link that is one more you cannot have more than one link between any two processes so these are some of the properties of a direct communication link now if we talk about the problems in direct communication so we have one major problem now let's say there is there is this uh, direct communication happening between these three processes and let's say so here P has to know about Q and R and R has to know about P and Q similarly uh, Q has to know about P and R so here if there was let's say some uh, process identifier whatever we have if let's say R got updated to S for some reason then since all these hard codings would be there every hard coding would have to actually be uh, gone through and then we'll have to update all these hard codings. So wherever there was R, everywhere it would uh, get updated to S. So this hard coding is uh, usually not good and uh, we have to actually update if, if at all the identifier of any process gets updated. So that's one major issue in direct communication. Now let's talk about indirect communication, the second type. So in direct communication we saw that uh, two processes they could directly communicate uh, through this link but in indirect communication let's say P and Q want to talk to each other they won't have a direct communication link but there would be some something called a mailbox so you through which these two processes will be communicating now this is an indirect communication because this is not uh, directly communicating but uh, they will communicate through some intermediary object so this is that uh, mailbox so mailbox you can think of it as uh, an object which will which can actually store some messages and uh, other processes can actually remove those messages and consume it 
that is what a mailbox is and every mailbox would have a unique identifier now how does uh, send and receive uh, look for like in, look look like in the indirect communication so send would basically look like uh, this and receive would also be similar so here a is the identifier of the mailbox so we want to send this message to a and then we want to receive this message from a where a is your mailbox so this is how send and receive uh, primitives look look like now let's talk about the properties so properties of an indirect communication link now here uh, since there is a mailbox connected uh, like you can say that two processes they have a communication link only if they have a shared mailbox so communication link will always have a shared mailbox that is one thing second thing is that uh, one link can actually be associated with multiple processes not just uh, two processes as we saw here like if there is one more process having the having a link to the shared same shared mailbox then this would be a same link like one link can actually be connected to multiple processes more than two processes basically that is also possible and then between any two processes let's say uh, we have any two processes here there was supposed to be only one link but here it's not necessary we can have uh, multiple links so these are some of the properties of an indirect communication link now let's talk about the problems in indirect communication what are the problems which we usually see so in case of indirect communication uh, let's consider an example let's say that there are these three processes and uh, they have access to one mailbox so let's say p uh, calls the send primitive and send some message let's say send some message m to this and p2 and p3 call the receive primitive so receive from a and this is the message they are trying to receive now in this case how do we know which process should receive this message since both of them have called so such problems may arrive in case of indirect communication now in such a case what we usually do is uh, we could solve this in like multiple ways now we could limit one communication link to be associated with only let's say two processes that that can be done or at a time we can make sure that only one process calls this receive that is one more way or uh, we can also allow this system as a whole to arbitrarily like pick uh, one of the processes to receive maybe we can implement some algorithms like round robin and then give every process a turn to basically uh, send this receive command now now that we have done talking about uh, direct and indirect communication so yeah this is done let's talk about these two synchronous and asynchronous and uh, explicit and uh, automatic buffering so like the two primitives whatever we talked about send and receive so these were the two primitives send and receive now uh, yeah so these were the two uh, primitives send and receive now how to like what are the design options which are available for us to implement these two so we basically have uh, two design options to implement these two one is uh, synchronous and then there is one more called asynchronous uh, implementation so synchronous is also called a blocking blocking implementation and this one is non blocking asynchronous so in both of these cases we have so like we we have blocking send and blocking receive and similarly in this case we will have non blocking send and non blocking uh, receive so what does blocking send tell you so any process calling this blocking send will have to actually it will be blocked until whatever message it sent is actually consumed by someone it is actually received by someone so if a process p1 sends a blocking send then it will be blocked this process will be blocked unless 
until uh, some process has actually consumed this message whatever it sent so once it is received then it will be freed up so till then it will be blocked that is what a blocking send is similarly a blocking receive command would be like whatever process has called this blocking receive it will be blocked until it receives a message it cannot uh, like receive some empty message that that is not possible so that is what blocking receive is now non blocking send and non blocking receive so here there is no blocking done so a process can keep on sending messages and on the receiving end the non blocking receive it can either receive a message or it can also receive none if there is no message at all then it will receive a none so these are the types of uh, ways in which the send and receive can be implemented now whatever uh, like communication is happening in this direct and indirect uh, communication it has to be done uh, through some temporary queues like whatever data we are moving that has to be stored in this temporary queue now there are three types of temporary queues one is called zero capacity buffer we have uh, something called a bounded capacity buffer and then unbounded capacity buffer so zero capacity buffer is like uh, between the talking processes p and q the capacity or the number of uh, let's say messages that this buffer can hold is zero so number of messages is zero that means we cannot store anything as soon as the sends uh, this has to be received by the receiving end bounded means uh, there is a finite length the number of messages you can send is uh, finite and uh, like process p can send only these many it cannot send more than n so p will be, will have to be blocked as soon as the length of the queue becomes uh, equal to n that is a bounded capacity buffer unbounded capacity is like uh, there is no uh, restriction on how many messages you can send so messages the number of messages can be sent is infinite now these two are actually called explicit buffering and this one is called automatic buffering so these are actually this part so we talked about direct and indirect communication asynchronous synchronous communication explicit and automatic uh, communication thank you